Hello YouTube, welcome to a new Swin Anatomy video and welcome back to a new Chromaphone 2 video. Chromaphone 2 is a percussive synthesizer based on physical modeling. And you maybe remember that I released already a video about Chromaphone 2 about the mallet and noise section. More precisely, these are the triggers of the resonators. In this video, we want to check out the resonator A and only two ones, so the string and the beam because I think the videos will be otherwise too long. And um, so in this video, we will check out the string and the beam. First, we have here the string, which of a sounds like a string instruments, but also more percussive sounds. Um, you can change here, for example, the pitch from the low to the high, then add keys to it. So if you want a stable sound, you remove this. If you want to play it over your keyboard, you add it. Then you have here the LFO, which adds a cool movement to it. So that's the basic sound. And if you add now the LFO, which needs to be activated here, I have here a sine wave. And you can hear it adds a bit of this movement to it, but also a bit this mellow character. So I remove it now. Then you have a pitch envelope. Then you have here the option to choose between four different models or the quality of the string. The first one, it has less the sound of a string, but more of a bell. This one is more oriented to string. And the last one is the best one. But it's hard to say it's the best one because all these models have their character. You have here a decay, that's a release, so it, that's more the traditional synthesizer controls. Here you have the hit position, so this, at least you can change the hit position of the mallet of, on the instrument or on the resonator. So this gives you always different characters. This can be also modulated here with keys, velocity and random. With the random, it is cool because you can bring a bit of flexibility in your sound. It, it will not sound always the same. Then you have here the low cut, so it is cuts the low ends of your sound. Then a tone, which acts a bit like a filter. But not um, immediately, so check out this the manual for more explications. Then you have here the material. So in this is cool because it changed the, the sound of the material of the instrument. And if you turn it to the left, it becomes less uh, brighter and also the decay removes. You can hear it's more um, less brighter and also the decay is lower. And if you turn it to the right, it becomes brighter and also it has more frequencies. And also the decay is again on a higher position. I have here a sequence so we, we can play a bit around. What is important for your sound? 
And also a very important feature here is uh, the triggers because these um, influence a lot how your sound will um, in the end which character it has. So uh, st stiffness here. So if you go to the left with the stiffness, it will have a less a sound of a percussive sound. So it has less the character of percussive, more of strumming, in my opinion. This can be also added here with keys and velocity, but if you add no noise, it becomes more characterful, a bit more the character of a percussive uh, instrument. It sounds to me not so percussive, sorry for that, but it's more, um, it goes more in the direction of a acoustic instrument, so it's like a guitar or so. Let's take a different sequence, and here you can also see that you can play them also in polyphony. And you can hear it now, it's like strumming a guitar. But we can also add here the noise or on, use only the noise. And with the noise, you can create also interesting pet sounds. If you combine them now with the mallet, you get some cool and uh, interesting sound because you have on one layer this mallet and under it also this noise and this is like a fuse, it fuses both together, what is interesting. For the next sound idea, I pitched down the resonator 8 to minus 18. That's quite a lot. Then I take down here the noise and also a bit the mallet and then material down here and let's see how this sounds. Yes, that sounds like a bass sound. It's a very classic bass sound. Now even more. So you can see there are a lot of options possible with the string. You can also create more percussive sounds, but also uh, sounds like a bass or a guitar, thanks to the noise generator here, which creates a bit of this drumming. Then we have the beam. Let's take the beam here. 
Same applies here to the beam, they are the same controls, like the key, LFO, DK, hit position, and more. And let's play with this one. First, without noise. Maybe also here add a bit of LFO. And to the left, it becomes far more like a percussive sound, more, more that classic clicky percussive sound. Maybe add a bit of knots. So it is a very soft sound, it's quieter, but for me it sounds a bit like you're playing with a mallet on a glass. Let's add here the noise. So that's again a bit of this sub texture here. So let's remove here the mallet and how this sound. It sounds a bit like you're blowing in a, fl a flute or if you're blowing in an, a bottle. So let's add again the melody here and a cheat again here. Let's play with the resonance a bit higher here and then add the noise again.
As you can hear, it becomes for me more like a bell on the right side. So there are uh, tons of possibilities here and because uh, I don't want to make now a video about f uh, in, for 50 minutes or more so I'm a bit limited with the sound possibilities here but you, you can see there are tons of new uh, little nuances possible where you can adjust the sound and it uh, will give you a different sound character. So I hope you get a good overview what you can do with the string and with the beam. And in the next video, I will check out the marimba and the drum hat for you. So big thanks for watching. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, please give a positive thumb and a subscription for more future videos. Big thanks and hope to see you again very soon in one of the next Synthonatony videos. Bye.